Hi, welcome to A Foreigner in the Philippines. I wanted to talk about telling your story. How do you tell your story? What, is, is your story worth listening to? Well, the first thing to do when telling your story is learning to listen. And this is a vital skill and it's something that you need to be able to do in order to be able to tell your story. You need to be able to listen to other people's story. This is, this is my, my belief and what has worked for me in the past. A long time ago, a long time ago when I was in California, I wanted to talk, I met, I met a woman uh, who was telling me about uh, a program that she had for benefiting teenage uh, girls who had had suffered and needed to find themselves uh, and she developed a program which she could take kids through and that they would make they would make gains uh, get stronger get more self-assured get more confident and it sounded like a great thing to me and at the time I was working on my writing skills and I said could we get together so that I could interview you? I would like to do an interview on you. And she was very flattered and said, yes. And we duly made an appointment and I went to see her. And it was just the two of us and we just talked. Well, she talked. And I listened. And for something like an hour or possibly two hours, I listened. Now, the importance of listening is that you have to actually focus on that other person. You have to give him or her your undivided attention and you have to understand everything that they have said. Beth Lobat You can't do it while it's on that mic. Okay, get the mic and charge it. And then it's okay if you don't have, just louder your voice, voice. Now I had a little gap there while I was <laughs> plugging in the battery charger. So where was I? Well, oh, I'll just try and remember. So you have to give that person then your undivided attention. You have to watch them. You have to look at, are they really communicating to me? Are they really feeling that I'm listening to them? Now, there were times when I didn't quite understand what she said, but I said, I don't quite get what you have said there. Can you tell me again? And she would tell me again. And then there were times where I could see by her expression that she wasn't quite sure whether I had got it. So I would ask her a very simple question. Do you, do you feel that I got you? got what you were trying to say there and she would say I'm not sure and I would say why don't we do it again tell me again and then when she told me again I'd say so did I get it and she would say yes if she had so always the emphasis was on her telling her story feeling that she had been heard and being understood and acknowledged. So at the end of it, I said, thank you for sharing all of this with me. Thank you. And when it was time to go, and I was saying goodbye, shaking hands at the door, I said, thank you for talking to me. 
and she said what I felt was a huge compliment. She said, it's I who should thank you. I have never felt so completely understood as I have talking to you. And I thought that that was a great compliment. So, now we'll assume that you've learned that same lesson as I did. And now you want to tell your story. What's telling your story? Well, telling your story is just getting your point over in a way which will interest other people. Are you telling a story when you just talk to someone about what you did yesterday? I believe that you are. Now, two people in my life who used to talk to me. One was my sister, one was my brother Nev. My brother Nev was younger than me by seven years. My sister was older than me by seven years. So, now my sister, as much as I loved her, was a terrible storyteller because she didn't do the opposite of what I just described to you as what I did with that lady. That woman, if I was that woman, I would have been watching me as the listener and making sure, did he get it? Is he still listening? And if not, just bring him back into listening to me by becoming more entertaining, at least. My sister was one of those who told stories in real time. And you can't tell a story in real time and keep somebody awake. Now, when I listened to my sister, much as I loved her, I used to think, oh, if only I had matchsticks so that I could hold my eyes open like this. Or like Stan Laurel, um, if I could have painted uh, an eyeball with the whites and the uh, on my eyelids, then I could have had my eyelids closed and she would have thought I was listening. Of course she wouldn't. But she used to tell things in real time. It was agony. Yes, well, um, it was Tuesday. Uh, now I know it was Tuesday because that's the day that the... Uh, that's the day that the milkman always comes and he always wants to be paid. Uh, it usually comes about nine o'clock in the morning. Now, now uh, not always. Sometimes he comes at ten past nine, you see, and he wants to be paid. Well, if he comes at ten past nine, it's because he expects to have a cup of tea. So anyway, I, I always remember that because whenever he has a cup of tea, he always likes to have two spoonfuls of sugar. But that Tuesday, last Tuesday, was it two spoonfuls of sugar or was it three? Do you know it could have been three? Anyway, I didn't have Thai food tea and he said to me, it's all right, PG tips would be okay. And that was what it was like. My brother, on the other hand, was a brilliant, brilliant storyteller. Would have you laughing and at the most simple things. Because he didn't tell things. He didn't tell events in real time. He compacted it up so the boring bits were all left out. Just reminded me of that, how it's all about the way that it's told. Remember, I may have told you a, a, a joke about a man goes to prison and he's in the canteen for the first time and all of the prisoners are all there and they're all eating their food and everything and, uh, and he's, trying to, he's trying to work out how he's going to fit in with this, um, this situation and, uh, and all the guards are around and everything. So, so, And then suddenly this man stands up and says, 72! And everybody in the place collapses with laughter! <laughs> he turns to the person next to him and says, what the heck was that about? He did, the man just said 72. And just at that moment, another man jumped up on his feet and said 49. <laughs> and everybody came. And this went on for about 10 minutes. And the whole place was in an uproar in happy laughter. So he thought, well, well, surely anybody can do this. And so he, he took his courage in both hands 
and he jumped up and he said, Five! Complete silence. And he sat down again and uh, was very embarrassed. And then he turned to the guy next to him that had told him about how everybody knew what the joke was because of the number that had been given it. He said, they all just said the number and everybody laughed. But when I said number five, nobody laughed. Isn't there a joke called number five? So the man says, yes. He said, well, why didn't anybody laugh when I told it? He said, well, it's the way you tell them. My brother could tell them. Boy, could he tell them. And he would tell them in such a way as to make you think that you could take that and retell it just like him and everybody would be entranced just like you were when he told you and you would carry that joke home carefully but it would be a little bit like trying to carry a bucket of water in a in a, a bucket that had a hole in it and it would start off full and you would carry it home quickly, as quickly as you could, in order to be able to tell the joke again. But some of it would have drained away, and the bit that drained away was the magic that my brother had as a storyteller. He was just brilliant. And while he was telling his stories, you loved him. And you admired him, and you wanted to be able to do what he did. Now, why was his way of telling a story so unique? Because he understood that there was only one Neville. And Neville knew who he was, and he never tried to be anybody else. So, the Neville that you heard when my brother spoke was the only Neville he knew. And he shared that with you. So when you tell a story, it's important that you go on from the last video, which was about separating out all of those squabbling voices, personalities, people you loved and people you hate and people you didn't want to be close to in your head and found yourself. Once you've found yourself, it's easy to just take over and start being yourself. But it's a little bit like riding a new bike. You may not Remember, you may not forget how to ride a bike, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be totally skillful when you first start riding it. You have to get used to how the brakes feel, don't you? And how the gears work and what the balance of the bike is, how fast you can go, how slow you can go, how quickly you can stop. How does it look? How does it feel? Is the saddle right? All of those things. You have to acquaint yourself with your unique personality all over again because you've spent how many years quietly telling that person that is you that he or she wasn't good enough and that you were going to listen to all those others. You were going to accept that everything that you heard was better than what you could say, what you could share. So you tell your story and you tell it in the way that makes you smile. You tell it in the way that is funny to you. That doesn't mean you have to go, I know the guy did this and it worked out, he was so funny. <laughs> no, you don't do that. You actually know that what you're saying is funny. And you share that joke or that story or that lesson and you share it in a way that allows the other person 
to be part of the story. That's the really important thing. So don't tell it in real time. That's the kiss of death, I can tell you. You tell it in your other time, which I've also talked about before. There is real time, there's Filipino time, which is when can you get here. Uh, there's the almost near time. And then there's other time. And the other time is where you have to go to tell a good story. You have to show what is the most salient points in the story without making it seem as if you've just chopped the whole thing up. But if you've got to get from A to B or A to D or A to F, you don't take everybody through the whole damn thing. You make the jump in a way that is still entertaining and still give the person a sense of continuity so that your joke or your story, which actually could be your life, and you make them feel that they've shared in how unique you are because it's not a new age uh, BS to say to someone you are unique because the fact is that you are just by just being yourself you are now this is not a promise or a guarantee that you'll be telling stories tomorrow and everybody will be going <laughs> that's, that's so funny no, that's not, um, that may not be your forte. That may not be your superpower. Your superpower may be in listening and sometimes being interested is more important than being interesting. Interesting is when you are talking and telling your story interested is when you are making that other person feel completely understood like the lady in my story this is a foreigner in the philippines i hope some of what i have said may connect so the the well the, the poor the, well, uh, uh, i know it was tuesday because the milkman comes round on tuesday you get the point. This is a foreigner in the Philippines. Bye for now.